Hello, everybody. Welcome to my third episode of my podcast. And today it's going to be a little different. And I have my first guest, which I'm so, so excited about. She, I met her through a friend who started me on this healing journey. And I was actually on her Instagram live show called Love Looks Good on You. I don't know how long ago that was. Oh, a month ago. And she's just so amazing, and I'm so excited to introduce you to introduce you to her. She's incredible, and yeah. Hi, Meg. <laughs> Hi, Lizzie. Thank you so much for having me on. It's just like such an honor, especially to be your first guest on your own podcast. This is so exciting. I'm just thank you for being here or for <laughs> letting me be here. Oh my gosh, thank you for being here. It's crazy how full circle this is because I remember we were talking about it and you were starting your own podcast, which Meg has a podcast called Meg and Greg Podcast, I think. Please correct <laughs> yeah, me if I'm wrong. Meg and, well, it's the Meg and Greg show. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, and it's a fantastic. And Meg was like, you know, you could do your own podcast. And, you know, it inspired me to do this. And actually, you inspired me to name it my medicine as well. That is so cool. I you know, it's funny, because we met through a friend, Katie. And um, when we started chatting in through Instagram and the DMs and stuff, Often you would share with me after watching an episode because you would always just have such beautiful insights after each of the episodes of Love Looks Good on You. And um, you would share with me how you would answer some of the questions or what your perspective was of the conversation. And um, you're like, you know, you should do one where somebody interviews you or asks you questions. And I was like, you know, maybe I can set something like that up. And um, so it's funny because just recently we were talking the other day, you're like, now we're kind of getting to do it, but it's with your podcast and you started this. And I love that um, your first two episodes have been amazing because really this is you sharing your medicine. And um, if you do continue to have guests on sporadically or whatever, like having them have the opportunity to share their medicine, it's just a really beautiful space and podcast that you're making here, Lizzie. And I'm just like, I love being able to witness the people that I love or anybody in general expand and just blossom into like the next favorite version of themselves. Um, and it's so beautiful. So I love to be a part of it. I'm so glad to be here. <laughs> thank you so much for being here and thank you so much for your kind words I definitely you know try to be as honest and vulnerable and I'm realizing that my guests kind of kind of need to be at that caliber and I I know that you are so it's super exciting to have you on here and yeah basically ask you the questions that I'm dying to know because <laughs> I'm always curious as to what your answers would be too because you're you're always yeah no that's it you know and you're not the first person to say that and it's funny because since I have this show and I interview someone different every single week I already know that the answers are going to be different because all of us are uniquely different and I also recognize that it's kind of synchronistic on when each person ends up doing the show because I'm aware our answers change. It really depends on what we're going through in our lives or what's really lit up for us or the pattern that we're seeing happen at that moment in time. So I'm, I'm pretty sure that I could ask somebody, you know, and then six months later, their answer would be totally different. So it's kind of an evergreen thing at the same time of going through a lot of these questions. Cause like I said, it's really what's lit up for you in the moment I've noticed. And, um, and that's beautiful because it's always, it can always be a conversation to be had. You could literally ask a loved one every single day, like, Hey, what does this mean to you? And it's kind of like, what do you need in the moment? Um, it's just asked in a way that isn't so much attached to, how you're feeling indirectly. So it's a, I'm just so like, 
I love that I was able to start this show and I didn't have any clue what I was doing. <laughs> and, and it just like evolved into this thing where I have met so many beautiful, amazing souls. You absolutely included in that. And seeing it expand others as well. Like all of these people I've connected to being able to like watch you now have your own podcast and you're stepping out into just doing the things that bring you joy. And like, that is why I started the show in the first place. So it just really freaking touches my heart to be able to feel the impact because we don't always see, you know, when we show up how it's touching people. And so those times where you are able to see it, it just feels really, really good. <laughs> Oh my goodness. I loved everything that you said. And I'm going to try to go in order. It's funny, me and my me and my friend Claire, we voice memo each other and we're there's so much to share. Like the voice memos can be like 10 minutes long, so we both take notes <laughs> as to what what we were saying so that we don't forget anything. Oh my gosh, totally. I feel like you have to, especially um that's what I do think is a little nice about Instagram is cuz they're in like 1 minute clips. Um so you can really like pause if you need to in between and have them in like chunks. But um I'm just excited for us to be able to chat back and forth as like a conversation instead of having those breaks you know, but I'm still taking notes. <laughs> you're, you're better than me. I don't actually know. I do have a pen, but I love that you said that the answer is constantly changing because it's so true. I would, I would consider the question. The question that Meg always asks is, well, she asks two, two questions, but the first is what does self-love mean to you? Which this episode is about self-love. And it's just constantly changing. It it totally depends on my mood. And it's so true. And I love that. It's like it's the answer evolves with the person, which is so beautiful. And you're so right. I never I never thought that I could do something like that. And you being able Meg has a crazy talent for just listening and reflecting back to you what you said and just holding space she is the ultimate space holder and i so hope to have space like meg and meg's probably gonna say you know oh you too lizzie you know and <laughs> but uh meg is just so awesome and she has like the best voice right meg you have like the best voice uh, that's so funny that you know you know, every time you like hear yourself speak or um, back in the day when you'd leave your friend a voicemail and you'd have to hear it played and you're like, oh, my gosh, that's what I sound like. <laughs> so it's, it's like it's funny um, when we hear our own voice, the perspectives that we have of it. But thank you so much, Lizzie, just for those really kind words. And what's really funny is you said like one of the kind the, one of the kind things that you said about me being able to hold space and. Um, listen and reflect things back to others at 11 minutes and 11 seconds into the podcast. <laughs> I thought that was really cool. I love that so much. And Meg is getting me more into numbers and, you know, I do, I do accounting. So I've always been around numbers and I love that. I love that you noticed it at 11, 11. It's big. And Meg, you know, they're, when we're going into this space, we're on we're on an app and it takes a few minutes to get into the same room together because Meg's actually in California and I'm in Connecticut and it takes a few minutes. But I mean, timing is everything. It, it so is. And that was so synchronistic and it happened that way because we're just we're right where we need. Yeah, exactly. We really are. And again, just how full circle it's come, the way that we met and how our conversations evolved. And then me having you on the show to be able to tell your story and then just diving deeper into what it is that you wanted to do. And then now you have this podcast and we have a synchronicity while we're on it. Um, I for sure am just feeling really grateful and just those reminders feel really good when you know that like everything that is right now is supposed to be. And we know that we can say that, 
but it's different when you can actually feel it. It feels really good when you're like, yep, everything led us to this moment. And here we are having this beautiful conversation on your podcast. And I'm excited. I'm, you know, you haven't shared any of the questions that you're going to ask with me. We wanted it to be really organic. So um, I'm excited (laughs) and a little nervous, but um, I think we talked about it before where it's just how my body feels like I'm excited and my body sometimes feels nervous. And I think that's the whole point of growth and stepping out of your comfort zone is acknowledging that you're going to have sensations that you feel, but having your mindset and your heart in a place where you know, like what really is going to bring you joy and what's going to feel good and be exciting. And that is absolutely talking to you. Thank you so much. That really means so much to me. I, I, Uh, I need to work on, you know, holding people. I mean, I do hold you in high regard because you're just, I, I feel I can relate to you a lot more than I can with, you know, other people, you know, and we, we do say that we're soul sisters and I've, I've met even more soul sisters on my healing journey and uh, it's just so amazing. But you, so when you were talking about the nervousness feeling, I was thinking, I learned somewhere that nervousness and excitement, those are like super similar feelings. So it could even be us, us thinking that nerve, thinking that our nervousness or our excitement is ner- is nerves. But I mean, perspective, <laughs> everything's so about perspective. I love that you brought that up because um, I had a whole conversation on Love Looks Good on You about this with Angie. I think she's episode four. So it was like in the early, early days. And um, she said, fear is excitement without breath. And so when I do feel like excited, but then you have like that nervous feeling, it's really just like a reminder to take a few deep breaths because, um, you know, whether we get those feelings each time or not, like every time before I do a live, I feel a little nervous, but it quickly goes away. And the point is to know that that feeling of those nerves or like that excitement is temporary and that I'm not going to be feeling like that the entire time. Um, And sometimes that stops people not realizing that it's just like this hump, this little speed bump to get over. Um, And not necessarily as a challenge, like we said, like, excitement and nervousness can be the same thing. So um, I just, I love that you brought that up because yes, absolutely. It's always a reminder for me to just take a few more deep breaths and just be present and really appreciate like why I'm so excited, like why this is so cool. (laughs) Oh my gosh, totally. I love that you said that because I think, oh my gosh, we forget to breathe. It's, it's, something that our body just naturally does that we just don't think about but breathing is so important it's like on my self-love journey I've realized you know it's the little things and it's easy to love yourself but it's also so difficult you know for example eating well and exercise you know I mean first of all it takes you to take that first step the first step is always the hardest but I mean it makes sense for your body to feel good to feed it nutritious things and you know go for a run but it's not necessarily taught and encouraged as much I mean the way I learned how to feed myself is through HelloFresh and no one else taught me because frankly no one in my family knows how to cook (laughs) so it's really like knowledge and remembering the little things like like breathing breathing is so crucial and it makes so much sense I feel like a lot of anxiety is just forgetting to breathe and realize that you're safe and being proud Yes, yes. You hit the nail on the head with the word present because like if we really dive into it as far as like what self-love means to me, what it means to me, like I said, it can shift and change. But um, what I think that it means overall 
is being present with yourself because that's the only time you can even know what it is that you need. Like whether or not you need to take a breath, whether or not you need to eat something, whether or not you need rest. Um, and then to the sometimes more challenging things as far as if this job is right for you, if this relationship is right for you, um, if, you know, you should end up making certain choices that um, need to create boundaries with other people. So all of those things can only have action taken on any of them in the moment. And so like I'm constantly putting on my captions or when I'm saying like self-love, it's a moment to moment choice because it's the only time you can actually make that choice to love yourself. And you need to be present in the moment to be able to tune into your body, to be able to tune into your heart, to be able to know yourself well enough to know like, is this going to give me deep fulfillment and joy or is this temporary satisfaction where later I might feel icky about myself or I'm going to have to work through any type of guilt or regret that might come up because of this decision like you have to know yourself to be able to almost think more into the future that way but then also have the compassion for yourself for if you do make any of those choices or if it was unconscious or not that's okay you know and that it's not a bad thing the meaning that we assign to everything is what really makes it good or bad. And if you don't view anything as bad and you just see it as a moment, you were able to learn more about yourself and find out more about what you desire, what you are maybe avoiding, what it is you're, you're afraid of, what it is that you want more in your life. Um, everything that we do teaches us more and more about those things. And again, like it's, reflecting back at the end of the day of all of those moments and choices we made. And if it was out of, I think it was Teal Swan. She had like a challenge. I don't know if anyone's familiar with her, but she's got a lot of stuff on YouTube. She used to do workshops all over the world. Um, and she has a few books and one of these challenges that she had was a self-love challenge. And it was it, how much your life would change if every day you just continue to ask yourself the question, what would someone who loves themselves do? whenever you're making a choice and then make that choice because it kind of takes you out of the equation. You're able to look at it a little bit more objectively of like that advice you would give a friend or someone where you like, be like, yeah, do what you love, do what you really want to do. Where sometimes we talk ourselves out of that. So I feel like that again is like in the present moment is the only time you can ask yourself that question, but it can give you a lot of information of what it is that you really want. And we can be happy and fulfilled and live a joyous life like that is what we're meant to do and experience and yes there are challenges that we face but it's all about perspective like you said of how we view those challenges what it is that we took away from it how much deeper we can love because of them <sighs> so um yeah self-love it just it really means to me like tuning into yourself in the present moment and finding out what it is that you really need in that moment over and over and over. Wow. Wow, Meg. I am so glad that you haven't done an episode of yourself yet because you saved the gold for my podcast. And thank you. That was, I mean, if anybody else is listening, like that was amazing. That was amazing. And I love everything that you said. It's so darn true. And that was also the ultimate segue I mean, I, we didn't go over the questions that I was going to ask you, but that is definitely one of the questions because that's like the question, one of the questions that you ask on yours. But I have a couple of notes on, I'm actually taking notes now, <laughs> but wow. Yeah. What I got from that is knowing what you need and listening to your body and to be honest, kind of getting out of your head and yeah, listening to your body and the best way to be present is to feel the senses around you and within you, which I didn't even think about before. And having the compassion and grace, if you don't make the best decision, you know, that's totally fine. You're exactly where you're meant to be and everything is right about you. That's a movement on Clubhouse and with Dr. Jill. But 
it's so applicable to everything is everything is so right about you. And exactly whether you think something is good or bad, like, yeah, perspective, but also just being grateful for everything. Even if, for example, my, my third mentor, maybe she's my second, but her, her pooch died recently. And, you know, she, she is still grieving, but it's also about perspective and what that dog gave her. And also, also knowing that everything happens for a reason and it's to serve your higher good and to challenge you and give you that opportunity for growth. And, oh, I just love that. I I also love that you, you said that quote from Teal Swan. I've never heard of them before, but what would someone else do? What would someone else do if they love themselves? Totally. That's kind of a question that I ask for my sister specifically. I'm like, well, what if I was telling you that I had body issues? What would you tell me? And she would say, well, I would say that you have an amazing body and you're perfect no matter what size you are. And I'm just like, thank you. And if you're willing, please tell that to yourself because it it applies to everybody, not just me or anybody else, but you, you're worthy as well. You're so worthy. Oh, Lizzie, I love that so much. Like so many of the things that you said, especially like, first off, I want to say I'm sad for your mentor's pooch, um, sending her so much love, but also how you touched on that being perspective and, um, there's another, <laughs> there's another quote that I've heard, uh, that I actually bring up often when, um, talking with others that have maybe experienced like heartbreak or grief and sadness. And it has a lot to do with self-love too, is grief is love with nowhere to go. So we, we still experience that separation when we lose a loved one or, um, a relationship or something, that attachment, that recognition us recognizing that we do experience this illusion of separateness and that's what gives us those this like human experience because we want to be loving like grief being um love not having a place to go like wanting to love the pooch but it's not like the you can't see them with you it's like oh you just want to give that love so badly and it just shows like how pure love we are where like we just want to give love so much and we really are able to enjoy our experience so much um, more when we direct that to ourselves, obviously, and um, under slightly different circumstances. But, um, you know, our self image, um, going back to what you were talking about before, it's funny because we get to decide really, like we have the power to decide our image being our best favorite self. And like this whole process of, you know, loving ourselves and healing is removing all of those beliefs and um, just stories that we've been told from the way others have painted a picture of how they perceive us. And that we've, you know, taken those on as, oh, this is who I am. This is what I do. This is how I feel. And when really like you get to completely build yourself to be however you want it to be. And when things come up, like I was saying before, it's not, there have been so many things that I've deemed quote unquote mistakes in my life and they absolutely had to happen for me to be where I am. So it's just really deepened my faith more than anything that like there aren't mistakes. Everything is supposed to happen. Everything's right about you. You're where you're supposed to be. And it doesn't always feel that way. It doesn't always seem that way. And, you know, I've been impatient for so many years out of my life. And I was constantly getting the message of like, just be patient, just be patient. And I'm like, no, I want all these things right now. And now that I am experiencing everything I've ever wanted, I'm like, oh, yeah, it makes sense that it had to take that long. Like, not that long, but like every step along the way had to happen for me to get here. I couldn't have skipped any of them. And it made me who I am. And now I'm in this place where I get to decide what that looks like. And I recognize that. And I know that. And um, 
yeah, us just kind of restructuring our image and recognizing that we get to choose how we want to be and we're naturally loving. So when we choose that as our core value, it makes it a lot easier for life to just flow and for us to trust more. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't even remember where that was going or where I started with that, but, um, yeah. (laughs) I loved it. I, I, oh, probably because I was talking about my sister with her. Yes, that's what it was. Totally. Because I love how you switched the perspective of, you know, what would you tell me? And it's like, we're able to have that great advice for others. But because we have the self image of all these things we've been told we are or aren't by others. It's like, well, no, that's not me. Or um, so yeah, that's what it was. Thank you. so. Much. Oh, my gosh, you're so welcome. Thank you so much. So many good gems in there. Oh, my gosh, this is such a treat. Me and me and my friend Claire, when we voice memo each other, and we hear each other, it's like, she said, it's such a treat. And I love that word. And it's such a treat to be sharing this space with you. You have such good insight. And I'm so glad that that people can enjoy you as well. I mean, not that I mean, it kind of sounds weird. But um, it's so hard. It is so hard to see when well, I feel like a lot of it is having expectations. It's hard to see that everything happens for a reason when maybe it's not going your way. And that has everything to do with expectations and being let down and disappointed. Yeah, disappointment is a hard emotion with adults and especially children. Like, That's the one that I think that I work through with my kids the most because, you know, sometimes things don't go your way and you really wanted it to and you're disappointed. And it is like shifting or acknowledging what your expectation was. Um, But at the core, like it's learning. And this has been something that I have been learning for the past year or so Mm -hmm. and will continue to, I'm sure, be Um, a lesson and just getting deeper and deeper is trust, not only self-trust like in myself, but trust in this unfolding of a bigger picture of there being so much more to me and all of us and these connections that we have and the person that you pass walking down the street, like really understanding how deeply connected we all are and holding the awareness of that throughout the day because then it's so much easier to let go and surrender. And that's where you find your peace is in that surrender of like, I don't know everything. I don't have all of the information right now, but one day it will all make sense. And I'll be able to look back at this moment like, oh, okay, like it had to happen because it either taught me something or um, it created action for me to do something differently or I you know a lot of the decisions that I've made had certain things in my life not happened I would not have made those decisions so um really learning to trust I feel like trust is just like every time I'm struggling or I'm going through disappointment or an expectation isn't met there's those moments where it's like okay I'm acknowledging that this is something that I was expecting and that I feel sad right now. And that makes sense because I'm feeling disappointed and that's okay. And then being able to lean into, I don't have all the answers and I trust that I know everything's working out for me. Like everything is always working out for me for my highest good, always and always. And um, leaning into that is really where I'm able to find more peace in those challenges. I love that so much. And wow, it's so true. I I feel like part of the self-love journey, and if you're hearing this and you're turned off by this, is having faith in a higher power. And it's just part of the part of it's a piece to this big ginormous puzzle that we're all part of. And So that really leads me to my next question, which I love asking people. If you're a friend of mine, I love asking. I love asking everybody this question is, what do you believe? Ooh, that is a good question. 
Um, it's so interesting because I feel like based off of the question, I instantly wanted to think that you were asking in regards to a higher power or like religious or spiritual. And if it is, I'm totally, I'll totally answer that. But I really wanted to answer first with myself. Like I believe in myself and I feel like everyone else should believe in themselves too, because that's where our power lies. Like whether or not you believe in a higher power, if you believe in yourself, like it's all going to work out for you anyways. Like that's where we're able to, again, when I was saying earlier, like we get to decide who we are and what it is that we experience in our lives and make those choices to embody that. And, um, to go back to what we were saying before of remembering to breathe, tuning into the moment of self-love, like being in the moment and being present, tuning in isn't something where it's just like, yeah, tune in and you'll figure it out and you'll have all the answers. I have spent a lifetime of disassociating out of my body and of like leaving it and not being there and not being in the moment to where figuring out how to be in the present moment and move from your head space with all the thinking into your heart space, with all the feeling, it opens up your body to all of the feeling. And so there's a lot that you end up relearning about yourself and relearning how to regulate. Um, but I believed in myself enough to know that not only could I handle it, but I believe in myself of everything that I want in this life and what it is that I'm here to do and my sole purpose that those are necessary steps to get me there. So that's like one answer <laughs> where it's like my self-love answer where everything's always going to be rooted there. Um, and if you want to like flash your thingy and say, if you do you want me to go more into like a spiritual higher power type answer? Is that what you were thinking? Yeah. Okay. No. <laughs> well, actually, I feel like part of what your answer was, was, Part of the, I do want you to go more into spirituality, but I feel that it kind of was an answer for that. I mean, at least what I believe in is that we're all divine beings. And I'm reading this book called, I want to remember it, The Book of Knowing and Worth, I believe. And it's basically, it, it says that it's not it's not us as it's not Christ as it's not us as Christ and i don't necessarily i mean you could you you can replace that word with it's not us as god or goddess it's the god or goddess as us if that makes sense and i think that that is my new favorite answer for what is self-love is believing in yourself I think that's so beautiful yeah totally Ugh, I gotta check out that book that sounds really good and um I do I completely agree I think at the end of the day it's believing in yourself in those things that we think that that come because our ideas are divine and they're just for us Whatever it is that we feel inspired by is meant for us we're inspired by a reason and it's actually taking action on those inspirations instead of talking ourselves out of it and that's when I ended up starting the show because I I kind of got fed up with myself and I had been wanting to do something and to contribute and use my social media even in a way that I felt like was contributing to love and raising the consciousness of humanity and spreading joy to others and support and making sure they didn't feel alone but then I would talk myself out of doing those things. If I thought to post something or do something, I'd be like, oh, no, I don't want to do that. And so it's like if I believe in myself, I no longer listen to that little voice in my head that says I can't do it anymore. And then you just watch your life change when that's like back to that question of what would someone who loved themselves do? If the self-love part is a little hard to grasp onto, it's like what would someone who believed in themselves do? And then you'll just make the same choice because you're right. It's like such a synonym goes hand in hand. Um, and then to dive deeper into spirituality, I, I agree. I do feel, um, I believe that we're divine beings and it's very funny because my life has been so interesting leading up to this because I didn't always think that, um, growing up, my, my mom was Catholic. My grandma was Buddhist. 
my dad was a Jehovah's Witness, and um, and we never really did anything church related. Um, I went through like some of Catholic school, but I never ended up getting my communion. And um, when my parents got a divorce, my mom started going to church, and so we went to a few Baptist church and. Um, I was there, I worked at one of the daycares, so I would just be there to hang out. I didn't ever get into any of like the, the Bibles. I wasn't really listening to any of the teachings and, um, I get into high school and, you know, I was alone all a lot of the time. Um, my parents, when they divorced, I was always with one parent and my other two sisters would always be with the other parent. It just ended up being that way. And so, um, they were always together and then I'd be separate and then we'd switch. Like I didn't always stay with one parent. And then when I would move in with the other one, the the other two would go to the other one. It was just, it was this weird dynamic. And, um, I've shared this before on love looks good on you and a few other places that like growing up, one of my biggest woundings that I've really had to work around, especially around motherhood, but was like, I just really wanted a family, like a loving family. And um, society got the best of me of painting a picture of what that looks like and also conditioning us and setting us up to have that be (sighs) dysfunctional was is common. It's like the normal. And I think a lot of us are beginning to wake up to the dysfunction and are there's so many more conscious parents now raising this next generation of children of really trying to break patterns. Like I think our generation and our children came here as these generational chain breakers to heal this ancestral, you know, trauma that we've experienced. And a lot of that comes with regulating our nervous systems too, of feeling into our bodies and knowing that like these sensations and these reactions that we have to life sometimes don't make sense because it's the way that our bodies were wired from birth and from our mothers and our grandmothers and, um, got a little bit on a tangent there, but, um, I ended up making a lot of friends in high school who were Mormon. And I'll tell you what, Mormons make family look perfect. And um, it was like a dream come true to where like, I just wanted to hang out with them all the time because they would welcome me in and treat me like a family. And um, believe it or not, I ended up getting baptized when I was 16 years old in the church. And um, it didn't last very long. I ended up you know, questioning a lot of it that I just didn't before. I just really wanted a family. And so um, I I just dove in and spent so much time with all of these families and then kind of lost touch when I started to really step into, like, do I even have any beliefs? Like, what is it that I believe in? Because for a while after that, there was like this longing of me not really being sure and me being like, you know, sometimes I think heaven is just made up to help people deal with grief and it gives you something to hold on to, like something to make this human experience a little bit easier to where I really felt agnostic, almost atheist for a while because there was no proof. I literally had no faith. I had no faith. I had none. And, um, I had like a spiritual awakening when, you know, I really started to dive into personal development and I recognized that I, ex- I felt so much shame and I didn't know that until I started reading more about Brene Brown. Like she does a lot of that. And I was like, wow, like I am healing so much from what I perceived as mistakes in my life from me wanting a family so bad that I'm joining these churches and I'm getting into these serious relationships and I'm having children and then um, creating these families and then breaking them apart because I realized that I'm completely unconscious through all of this. I'm just living out my trauma and my wounds. And I had yet to really like look at myself and process so much shame and guilt and regret. And I, my, as speaking of self image, like I hated who I was. And um, didn't know I could change that. And so I thought there was something deeply wrong with me. And um, in starting that journey to love myself more, I found a podcast and it was the Positive Head podcast. And it changed my life because he posted every single day and a lot of it was spirituality, but I didn't know I was getting into that. I was so tired of being unhappy 
but I had already made a commitment that I wasn't going to trigger alert here, but like I wasn't going to kill myself because I felt like, although at the time I thought I was a burden to my children of, for them having the mother that I was, it would have been more traumatizing to them if I ended up to doing something like that. And so I was like, well, if that's what's going to happen, like I can't continue to be the person that I am anymore. Like I have to change something. And so I Google searched like positive podcasts or positive content. And that's how I ended up finding it. And a lot of it was spiritual based. And um, I found like a local metaphysical shop and I went in there like so naive. I'm like, so there's this thing, a higher self that people keep talking about. Like, how do I find that or connect with it? Like, what am I supposed to do? And um, being able to step on my comfort zone and just seeking, like, Again, I actually haven't ever read the whole Bible, but I know some of the quotes and I apply them. And like, you know, if you knock, you will get answers. And if you go seeking, like the teacher appears and um, so many of those spiritual teachings and, you know, a good amount of some of the religious teachings, like they're rooted in these universal laws. And um, anytime something comes up, that and I feel like it's very fear based, it makes you want to be afraid of something, then I steer away from it. Because all like the good and spirituality and things like that, it's going to empower you, it's going to show you that you have a choice, and that you can decide. And um, if it tells you otherwise, like you're going to be punished for something, or there's these type of consequences, like the consequences are how you feel like the vibration that you're experiencing because shame is at the bottom of the consciousness frequency scale. Like I think it's Bruce, Dr. David Hawkins or Bruce Lipton talks about it a lot, but it shows where, what frequency each emotion is. And it's also a really great tool to use on how you process emotions because shame is at the lowest because that's like self-hate and then there's guilt and there's um, sadness and depression. And then there's anger So it's like when you see someone who's really angry, they're actually coming in more into their power, more from an empowered place because they're no longer, you know, in their sadness. Anger can actually create a lot of action. So it's like a step up from depression that that person's feeling angry. And um, yeah, so this is a really long winded answer, but I have been deepening my trust ever since I really started on my journey more and more. And the more that I lean into it, the more life has these crazy synchronicities to where that deepens my trust even more because there's no way I'd be able to explain some of the things that have happened or how much things make sense in at least the story that I choose to weave. And I think the biggest part about when I started the show of Love Looks Good on You was recognizing after 2020, I learned so many crazy things about the world and I was experiencing a lot of fear And that was causing me to create this thing. I have a very strong energy. So how I'm feeling is how my home is feeling. And when I was in that fear-based place, like I was scared to leave my house sometimes, or like I would make sure that my husband was okay. My children, there's all this like panic. And um, I luckily it didn't last very long for me. I know it lasts, you know, maybe some people are still suffering with it, but a few months went by and I was like, I can't live like this. If, and it was like, I've been doing so much, research and learning over the past years about spirituality and energy and vibration that if I'm holding a vibration of fear, I'm not doing the collective any good. So I'm like, I need to get myself first out of this fear-based perspective and shift my energy so that what it is that I am giving off and that I am holding and carrying is love, is compassion, is grace, because we don't have to agree with each other, but I can still be kind to you. I can still acknowledge that like we are human beings at the end of the day. And that's what all of us care about when there's sides against each other. Like we still all deeply want connection, belonging, understanding. And so that's when it was like, yeah, I'm going to do a show about self-love because if that's how I know what the answer is for me to be able to live happier within the chaos of the world. Imagine if everybody did that. Um, And so, so many things have happened and astrology, I love astrology. I totally believe in that. And I definitely believe in soul contracts that like we choose to come here and we choose to have specific types of experiences and they manifest 
differently. We have free will, like I said, in every moment to moment, we get to choose what it is that we want and we can be unconscious to that. But the excitement of being here is knowing that we do get to choose what we want to experience, but that at the end of the day, it's all providing us with so much I want to say the word experience again, even though I said it like four times already in the last like two sentences, but like we, we are like love again, what I said, like grief is love with nowhere to go. And here we are in this illusion of separation, knowing that we're pure love. So we come here to be able to appreciate that. Like I wouldn't love my life as much as I do now. If I didn't have those moments where I didn't want to be alive, I just wouldn't appreciate it as much. And, um, Therefore, it makes those moments incredibly meaningful to me. And it also gave me the perspective of people who are also in that position or who feel that low. I can have compassion and understanding for them because I've been there. Like I have that empathy where I can relate to how it is that you're feeling. And had I never experienced any challenges, I'd have no way of relating in that way. So when you say like one of my gifts in the beginning of this is being able to listen to somebody and um, reflect back to them that I hear them. I thank my life experience for those things, which, you know, if I didn't experience any of the things, I wouldn't be able to do that. So again, it's like these full circle moments just deepen my faith more and more that I am being guided and I have a purpose. I came here for a purpose and I express it in me healing myself and me being able to offer love and support to other people. And when I do that, being able to see these ripple effects of how me just sharing my story offers someone some type of reassurance that everything's going to be okay or that they're not alone. And because I see the value in my own life and experience, I understand that every single person here holds a unique perspective of what they've experienced from their childhood um, into adulthood, whatever it is, just by sharing those stories of those experiences and what's been learned that right there is a purpose just by sharing your story you are able to provide perspective where now I may not have to experience the things that you went through like you or I learn a, me- a lesson or a message from your messes that you experienced and I can take away knowledge from it that helps me on my journey so like us opening conversations like this these new apps of social media like clubhouse and green room and that allow us to be able to share with each other what we're going through helps heal us collectively, I think, in such a bigger way that we don't realize. Because yeah, I believe that we are all one, we're all from the same source, and we're all having different perspectives. And, um, and we're able to learn so much from each other. Like, there's so much value in what a person has experienced in the way that they look at the world, that um, I feel like that's almost the point. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So I feel like we're kind of going full circle right now and you saying that everybody has a different perspective and has different experiences and that's really their medicine. So when I write my medicine, when the title of this podcast is called My Medicine, Meg, first of all, inspired me to name it this, not because, you know, I love shrooms or because I love plant medicine, because our experiences are our medicine, you know? So Meg is, I mean, I was going to ask you, what is your medicine? But you're giving me, you're giving all of us your medicine right now with sharing your experiences. And it's so beautiful. Your story is so darn beautiful. And oh my gosh, I have, I'm taking notes on sticky notes and I have like seven sticky notes around me that I'm I'm like oh my gosh I don't even know what what points to touch on because there was so much good stuff Meg that was so good I actually right before this I had my realtor over Heather she's awesome and she was saying we were talking about politics a little bit and with COVID and everything and the at least in the United States, with our former president, how people are so divided and separated. And when someone has a different idea than you, 
it's almost as if they're not a human anymore. It's like, oh, you believe in this? You think that this is right? You're not even a human to me. You're below me, you know? And I think I think a lot of self-love is accepting every part of yourself and having space and patience and understanding for other people who may have a different point of view, you know? Before, I was really anti-Trump, you know? I mean... I'm still not not super happy about him, but I can understand that he's probably experienced a lot of trauma and maybe, I mean, not maybe, but people resonate with that. People resonate with him and that's fine. That's perfectly fine. If you resonate, that's fine. Before I was like, I don't know if I can be friends with someone who supports him. And I was dehumanizing other people and not realizing that we're literally all the same. We have all the same needs. And that was because I was not loving myself. I wasn't able to love other people because I wasn't loving myself. And just having certain opinions that if you disagreed with me, then you're not, you're not seen as a human to me. And I I definitely don't don't feel this way anymore but I feel like a lot of people that's where that's what happens is when we don't have patience and understanding for ourselves how is it possible to have patience and understanding for other people so loving yourself it sounds so easy well it might, it's not, it's not easy. It sounds easy. Like, Oh, all I have to do is love myself and everything's going to be great. It's not easy. But once you do start loving yourself, everything changes and it sounds easy, but it's probably the most difficult thing is to go within, you know, it's so easy to, Oh, look at, for example, my, my dad and my stepmom they would see people out and about in pajamas, going to a store in pajamas. And I was always like, why does it matter so much? They would always criticize people who were out and about in PJs. And it's so easy to look at other people and put them down to make you to make yourself feel better. It's easier to look outside versus inward when all of the work that anybody ever needs to do to love themselves and be complete is to look inward and drudge up that that not so pretty stuff that happened and being forgiving of yourself because everybody makes mistakes and faith and spirituality i i also i mean it's wild how many perspectives, Meg, that you had when you were growing up. And I honestly, none, neither of my parents were religious. Religion was never really a prominent thing. I was never forced to do anything. I was never baptized. It was just not really ever my thing. My, me and my friend from high school, we would always say, you know, we're agnostic. We don't, we don't really believe in anything. And just loving myself. I just, it's so crazy. As soon as you start this healing journey, you realize that there is a higher being and everything happens for a reason and trust. I feel like a lot of it is trust that everything's going to happen. Also, we were talking about how you notice all the synchronicities and it's honestly because before, before all of this healing was happening, we weren't looking for the synchronicities. We weren't looking for messages from the universe. So when you start looking and paying attention, you see a lot of them, a lot. And it's really cool. Like I posted on my story, I haven't, I, I just bought an Oracle deck and there's 45 cards in this Oracle deck. And I've picked six cards out of the deck. And four of those cards were the same exact card. And the number on the card was 36. And Meg actually sent me this lovely angel numbers chart. 
And if anybody is interested, please let me know on Instagram. We'll, we'll plug in our Instagrams after this, but I looked at the number 36 and currently I'm going through a lot of life changes right now. If you listen to my previous episodes, I was probably more ambiguous because I'm kind of still, I'm still in what I'm trying to get out of literally and metaphorically and in the number, the 36 number, it was, it was saying, trust that everything's going to work out all of the, it was just, again, like Meg said, something I just couldn't explain. And it was so applicable to what I was going through. And it's just the universe saying, you keep picking this card out of 45. I don't even know what the odds of me doing that are. But I kept picking the same card to not only read the passage in the book, but also to look at the number that Meg sent me only a few days before. It's just, it's just crazy. And you might be like, oh, that's just a coincidence. But personally, part of my spirituality and believing and trusting that there is a higher power is everything happens for a reason. And there are no coincidences. Everything yeah, it, everything happens for uh, Lizzie, I just want to first like really acknowledge and thank you for your vulnerability and authenticity and even being able to say like, you know, that perspective from this you first started of how we can often be pitted against each other where we aren't actually, we dehumanize one another and um based off of how some people react or what's a popular thing to do or whatever and our triggers and our woundings of that fight or flight or types of responses with each other and what that looks like. And, you know, the story about the store and the PJs, um, I can so relate to that. And I think that's a really relatable example too. And what it shows me Emily, I think, talked about this on her episode, but um, when we're critical of others, it's really because we're being so critical of ourselves that we don't want to let them get away with being able to do what we won't let ourselves do. Like, if I'm not going to allow myself, like, I would never leave my house in my pajamas. It's like, well, you almost hold people in contempt for doing what you wouldn't let yourself do. And so having that compassion and understanding and just acceptance, too, that everybody's living a different life and they get to do whatever they want. And what's amazing is you get to do whatever you want, too. Then it's okay. It's just like you can let it go because at the end of the day, when you start showing up from that place of like loving yourself and like at your core doing what's not only the win, win, win. I think that's really what we're shifting into here is we've all been taught that there's this or that, and you can't have both. You have to sacrifice to be happy. You have to sacrifice something to be able to get something else. And so that leads to all of these codependencies of with substances and relationships where you have to manipulate someone else to be able to have your needs met to where, you know, um, it's just, you don't need to, like, if there's a win, 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 where I get to be able to have what it is, my needs met, you do too. And it meets the needs of the collective of the group of humanity. Like there are choices like that. We are so incredibly creative, but we aren't when we're in this fight or flight response, when our nervous system is activated it actually shuts down that part of our brain. And so to get to that calm place where people feel like they've lost their creativity or you don't have ideas or solutions to problems that you're in, when you do start healing, you're expanding and you're opening up, you're allowing your body to heal itself and put you into that state of rest to where then your body doesn't think that you're in danger and you can have more creative solutions to the problems that you're experiencing in your life. And to touch on the, those amazing synchronicities, it starts, you start to see them more when you're on this healing self-love journey, because when you start to really believe in yourself 
and you're consistently showing up for yourself over and over again, you're proving that whatever those limiting beliefs are that you have in your subconscious mind, you're creating a new neural pathway, a new road that hasn't been traveled yet, and you're breaking this pattern. And um, Carl Jung, he um, he worked with Freud for a while too, but he teaches a lot that there's a subconscious there's a super conscious, like the collective conscious, and then there's also our unconscious. And when we're able to be not only aware, but honor and like really treat the ideas that come to us as divine, like they are meant just for us. And if we act on those, and that's where we place our faith and our belief in ourselves that it's coming from, like, it's okay, like this idea that comes like removing the conditioning of not being good enough or any type of shame and unworthiness. And you reprogram your subconscious mind through there's a lot of practices that you can use and you create those new neural pathways. When those are synced up, where your heart and your mind and your body, all of those are aligned you start seeing synchronicities everywhere because you've bridged the gap of the computer that's running your life and your conscious mind of being able to actually implement the ideas that are coming through and program your subconscious mind to do and behave and have the patterns that serve you, that serve these ideas, that serve your desires and this purpose that you feel like you have. Um, So yeah, I just, I love that there's actual tangible tools that you can use to experience synchronicities and um, lasting results in your life to really break habits and patterns that you've experienced your whole life and change. It's not, it takes a little bit of time through repetition and showing up for yourself, but those who are courageous enough, like you said, Lizzie, like your whole life can change. You're so right. You're so right. It's like, it's like giving yourself that chance and it's so hard to, I feel like, I feel like people, some people are just stuck and they don't know where to turn. And it's so cool because light workers, you know, healers like you, and they, they just are kind of that light at the end of the tunnel. And it's like, Oh my gosh, I can actually be, I can actually love myself and be, and uh, it's just so beautiful. There's, there's so many things that I want. Oh yeah. So the, one of the more recent things that you were talking about was lasting changes and loving yourself. And I feel like a lot of people, you know, they'll go on a diet and it won't last very long. The goal is to The goal is to be skinnier or lose weight, but it's so limited because, because it's not holistic. Like you're talking about the holistic healing that, that in that require that self-love requires it. It's not just (laughs) my cat is driving me nuts, but it's not just exercise and eating healthy either even though that is kind of what I was talking about before, it literally has to do with everything, your mind, body, and soul. And I feel when you don't have all of the pieces, you're kind of just picking one or two up. It's not going to provide for lasting change. If you are, you know, I usually run in the mornings and I've been taking, I took the last couple of days off and I could be hard on myself and be like, wow, Lizzie, you're such a loser. Why, why didn't you do that? It would be easy to do that. But instead I am telling myself I needed the rest and rest is productive and it allows me to save up energy for myself during the day to do other things. So I think the lasting changes really connects to that holistic approach, which it's not just one thing. It's, it's literally everything. And let's see. Oh yeah. So you were talking about projection and I also neural pathways. I love that you were talking about that. I feel that when you, 
take the other kind of medicine that I've been talking about, the magic medicine that really helps to heal those neural pathways and just opens your mind so much more to understand. And it's crazy. If you look at the root system, I believe in trees or mushrooms, they look a lot like neural pathways in your brain. And basically, what is that doing? The neural, healing those neural pathways allows you to think differently and just be, be better. Be, well, be, serve your highest good. Do you have anything to add to that, Meg? I'm tripping up on Yeah, yeah. No, I love that you brought that up, Lizzie, because, um, like, when you take the plant medicine and you're, like, it, ha- it helps you think differently, not only with the neural pathways, but our thoughts come from the sensations that we feel in our body. So it's really helping like regulate our nervous system, which is also activated by those neural pathways where like when a certain neural pathway is lit up, our body is, we have this sensation and then we're given these thoughts to think about it. So for instance, when I first started the show on Instagram, I had never done a live before. I was putting so much trust and faith And when I do that, it's almost like I just like turn off the other thoughts and I just, I'm like, I have no idea what I'm doing, but I'm just going to go with it. And I was terrified, terrified. It was like, I've never done anything like it before. And so afterwards, because I was so scared to do it and I was like showing up more, um, every episode I was doing like deep shadow work because my body would be triggered into embarrassment, humiliation, like I was so much was coming up for me because I said something in a certain way, or, um, I shared an opinion that was like really generalized where I'm like, Oh my gosh, I didn't acknowledge this other perspective and like being super critical and hard on myself where it took me doing it over and over and over again and feeling into that and recognizing that like the sensations in my body were real and I was feeling them, but able to separate it of me knowing in my mind and in my heart, like my truth of my worthiness and um, that I am good enough and that my intentions are pure. And that's like really part of doing this shadow work and just the work in general. It comes back to what you had um, really touched on was judgment. Like at the end of the day, that's the biggest like healer of not only forgiveness, but like losing and not judging something. Cause the second you judge something as bad, then that means there's something wrong with you or you did something wrong. Or when you, when you're going to eat healthy or exercise and let's say you're trying and it's not working for you and you're not seeing results. Oftentimes the first step is accepting that it's okay. And you are okay. Exactly as you are right now you're perfect. Everything is right about you because coming from that place of wanting to change because you think there's something wrong with you or wanting to change, um, because you don't like who you are and you don't want to be that way. You have to accept where you're at, where you're at in the moment and then change for the reasons deeply because you want to care and love for yourself, not because you want to lose the weight and then you'll be happy or because, um, you know, you want to do all the booty squats and then, you know, you'll feel sexy. It's like feeling it already now as is and still taking those actions because you know it'll help you feel better, but working on loving yourself in the moment as you are right now and not judging anything for good or bad, like knowing that you're a human being and moment to moment you can make those choices that are good for you. And it's not, judgment is so hard. I feel like, um, our children right now are going to be faced with a struggle uh, or challenges at least with judgment just from growing up with social media. I didn't have that when I was younger and um, comparison that's comparison fuels judgment because now you're judging yourself based off of somebody else. And so that's really like where you first need to be able to work on that. I think that if you're struggling with judging yourself harshly, 
it's like stop comparing yourself to other people would be a first step. And that's going to help bridge you into accepting things right as they are so that it can be a loving, supportive change. When you're trying to change and it's not coming from that place, you're going to be really hard on yourself. And how can you think that you're going to be able to show up at the gym every day if you're calling yourself a piece of crap over and over again, you know? But if you're showing up at the gym every day because you're like, oh, I freaking love me. I'm doing this because I care about my body. I'm doing this because I love me. And when you have those hard times to get out of bed, it's like, I know how much this means to me. And that really, like, was a big part of my self-love journey, too, was learning to trust myself, not just in me being able to handle situations, but that I can count on me. I'm not going to let myself down. I'm not going to reschedule things on myself. Like if I made a commitment, I'm going to stand by it because I would do that for somebody else. So it's like, why wouldn't I do that for myself? And instead I'm feeling disappointed because I'm letting myself down over and over again. And, um, and that makes it to where if we can't trust ourselves, we're not going to have confidence we're not going to be able to trust other people in our relationships. Like you said, it all is a projection um, of we aren't able to be able to accept other people, to stop criticizing other people. Like the life lesson is us shifting it within ourselves because then we have all the practice. We have all the understanding, all the empathy to where then it's effortless for other people. And I think it touches back to where if, if in response to that, it's like, I'm super kind to others and I have a really hard time being kind to myself. It still can be that, again, manipulation of getting our needs met in a different way instead of recognizing that we can do that all on our own and showing up for ourselves and not expecting other people to show up for us and having it be from that empowered place of knowing how freaking amazing we are. Like how unbelievably fantastic and beautiful and deeply loving I truly believe every human being is capable of and at their core. And something that has really helped me be able to hold that is this, um, I don't know if it was a quote or a story or where I heard it from, but it touched me, was the people in our lives that are the most challenging for us or that we experience the most like hatred towards actually love us the most because they signed up to have a position in our lives where we would be unkind to them or where they would be at the end of unkindness and they were willing to take that so that at the end of our lives when we are looking back on like how did I live my life how was I kind to other people was I living my life out of love and to support others or was I in fear and thinking other people were these enemies and not these beautiful creatures to co-create with those people that we end up hating the most are the ones that teach us the most about ourselves and energetically have the most love for us to be willing to be that like scapegoat and that energetic target where they get the brunt of things from so many people. So it just helps shift a little bit and have more compassion and less judgment and criticism for those type of people. And again, it all comes down to perspective. Doesn't matter what you believe in you get to choose. Like we have so much power with our minds and with this higher power that we get to choose our lives, which means we get to choose how we look at everything. So if you're feeling like you're struggling, whatever it is that you're focusing on, if you choose to look at it differently, you can feel into certain things that feel better. You get to actually choose to feel better just by shifting the perspective of the way that you're viewing something. Um, So again, like believing in yourself enough to know that that's possible is, I think, just the root of self-love. So, yeah. Oh, my gosh. I loved all of that. Oh, you're dropping so much gold. (laughs) Thank you so much. Seriously. And I, I love I love your laugh. I love your voice. I hope that. I hope that you recognize that you're not going on tangents. It's a flow of conscious. It's a stream of consciousness and we're all loving it so much. And wow. Wow. You saying that really. So if, if I didn't mention it before, I haven't been talking to my dad since October and it's, it's July now. So it's been a while. And he 100% is that scapegoat that you were talking about. 
it's making me it's making me reflect a lot on the relationship that I have with him and why it's really so for example you know my dad is probably the the most challenging person that is in my life and I really it's it's more cl- it's more clear to me now that it's because he has qualities that obviously I have not maybe not all of them but a lot of them that I maybe am not crazy about I have within myself which is why I'm still critical of him because I'm still critical of those those thoughts and ideas within myself so it's just it's just a matter of time at this point is being able to forgive myself for the things that I see in my dad and forgiving and understanding where he's coming from because I know he is so when I was going down this right before I met Katie at that moving out sale I I was having a lot of resentment towards my dad because I you know was doing a lot of research about narcissism and that really that really fueled my fire for seeing other humans not as humans but as monsters and being like wow he has a lot of qualities that I've been reading this person has a lot of narcissistic qualities quote unquote and he's a they're a monster you know it's it's totally dehumanizing and I don't regret thinking that way but I choose to think differently and you're right we we all have choices that's what life is all about is making those choices and sometimes it's hard to make the choices and it's easier to stay where you are because it's so familiar and that's how our ego and just being a human has evolved over so many years. So, wow, that was really insightful. Thank you so much for saying that. Um, yeah. Oh, I just wanted to, um, like, thank you again, Lizzie, for sharing about you and your dad and just how that resonated with you. And um, you shared about that relationship on your other um, episodes as well. Um, And I resonate so much with it too. I haven't spoken to my father in over two years because probably even longer, like three years um, to the point where he's never even met my youngest son before. I let him know when he was born and I've sent him, you know, a few text messages here and there. He hasn't really responded but I don't necessarily blame him because we don't have this connection and I, it's so similar. Like, obviously there's these qualities. And when I heard that um, perspective, I thought of my dad too, to where I was like, Oh man. And it did help me have more compassion and forgiveness for him. And then again, for myself, for the way that I was viewing him in my life and how much, blame I was putting on him for my childhood experiences or, um, yeah. And there's a, a Hawaiian practice it's called Ho'opo'ono and it's really good for self-love if you do it with yourself in the mirror. But I recommend to all my peeps to do this with anybody in your life that you might have struggled with or needed to work on forgiveness. And you say, um, I'm sorry please forgive me. Thank you. I love you. And that's the affirmation. And you visualize whoever it is that you're saying it to. If you're doing it as a self-love practice, which I highly recommend even starting there, um, you say it to yourself in the mirror, any chance that you get, because there's so many things again, to go back to that judgment that we are, um, resenting ourselves for not forgiving ourselves for. And then 
if we're going back to being critical, if we're not going, if we're going to criticize other people, it's because we're criticizing ourselves and holding them in contempt for breaking our rules of life. And same thing goes with forgiveness. If we're not able to forgive ourselves for things, we're not going to be able to forgive someone else for that as well. And it's still okay to have boundaries. Like I'm on the self love journey and I can forgive my father and I love him so much. And we're just in this space where we don't talk to each other. It wasn't, we weren't really close growing up. And I'm definitely one of those people where it's like, it doesn't, I don't like falling back on, well, it's always been this way. Like it doesn't always have to be that way. But I do recognize that everybody is on their own journey and I can send love and be here and hold boundaries and people get to choose if they want to be in my life and live according to those boundaries based on how they treat me. And that's where I think the self-love really comes in is if we're allowing others to treat us poorly, why? Like, how are we treating ourselves and why are we allowing that? And then recognizing that we can still have love and compassion for somebody and not have them be in our lives. And also hold space for it to be a possibility in the future and that it doesn't have to be forever. So, um, and oh, again, the thing that you mentioned about narcissism. I completely agree how that's like this word that's kind of thrown around. And I think it gives our power away. It gives the narcissist, this person of that, then it's all their fault, right? That we're codependent or it's all their fault that we are in these situations. But the narcissist and codependency, it's the same thing. Um, it's just, there's polarities like hot and cold, um, hot, they're both temperatures. Like if you have hot water and you have cold water, it doesn't make one not water. It's still water. So a codependent and a narcissist work so well together because they're both very codependent and you can shift back and forth. It depends on who's being the most codependent will almost automatically create a narcissist in response to it when you have those tendencies. So in a lot of my relationships, I'll, I'll go back and forth. Um, like with me and my husband, for instance, we have been working through a lot of those codependent traits and setting boundaries with each other and recognizing that it doesn't mean that we don't love each other because now we have these boundaries and stuff and um, working through when we're activated based off of someone's new boundary year. But I would tend to be more on the narcissist end because my husband would tend to be more on the codependent end. So, and then, you know, maybe the next day we would switch and flip. Um, so I love that you brought up that it would almost be like dehumanizing having these labels that we give this expression of how we treat each other um, and recognize that it's both coming from a place of wounding, of believing we're not enough. It's just how it's being expressed outwardly. And yes, that doesn't mean that the behaviors are kind or that they're acceptable. It's set boundaries and then going back to <laughs> the Bible that I've never read forgive them for they know not what they do. Like really when it comes into those narcissistic tendencies, I used to ask all the time, like, Oh my God, am I a narcissist? And everyone would respond to me. If you're asking, that means you're not. And I hated that as an answer though. Like it wasn't clarifying enough because sometimes I would read things and in certain arguments when I would be triggered, things that I would say or how I would behave, I would be like, Oh my God, like, I think I'm a narcissist. <laughs> I'm like the way that I respond in arguments or how I would be treating my husband in certain like situations that we would come upon when we would be struggling. I would take on that role, but I'm also very self-aware or I try to be, and I'm just peeling layers every single day to learn more and more about myself. I'm able to actually make different choices. So while I wouldn't say that I am a narcissist, this is me just being able to show that because of my experience and me paying attention to how I feel in every moment and reflecting back through journaling on what my days were like, what my experiences were like, I was able to pick up on those expressions and then choose to shift them, choose to do something about it, which makes you not a narcissist, but <laughs> that doesn't mean that it still can't express and have the same quality. Oh my goodness, totally. When when you were talking about narcissism and having narcissistic qualities, I would always ask myself the same exact question because I was doing so much research about about 
this. And I was like, wow, I can, I can relate to a lot of these things, you know? And I was just writing down that I feel like it's just a spectrum. And like you were saying, self-love and your answer for self-love is moment to moment. And you could be anywhere on that spectrum of, I feel like codependency and narcissism, like narcissism, those people are really codependent. So, so I guess I would say narcissism versus like, I guess the other side would just be like complete awareness and knowing, I don't know, but basically just recognizing that even, I mean, to be honest, I don't even know if I believe in narcissist as a person, like my dad, you know, though he has narcissistic qualities, he's not always like that. He's, he's not always that far on the edge of that spectrum, you know? And when I was learning about it, it was like, okay, you either are, or you are, or you aren't a hundred percent in or out. And now that I'm talking to you, I'm getting so much more clarity that it's really moment to moment. And going back to when you were saying that saying, talking about projection during one of my journeys with my plant medicine, not my plant. Well, yeah, my plant medicine, I learned that everything we do, everything is projection. It's literally how we feel about ourselves outwards to others. So if someone is maybe not treating you the best and not treating you the way they deserve, it's because they're not treating the way that they deserve. And it's hard to see that because we take things so personally, especially when we're not loving each other and we're getting validation from other people and other people are telling us what our self-worth is, then, yeah, we're losing our power like you were talking about. And we're going to take it personally. And that's going to be, yeah, losing our power. But we are reaching this hour and a half and thank you so much, Meg, for hanging in with me and joining. I'm I'm so darn happy that you were my third guest. Our favorite number is three. At least one of them for you is three. And this is the third episode. It's perfect. Meg gave me this idea for my medicine and to have the podcast. So it's absolutely perfect. And Meg, do you have any closing statements you want to say? Just how much I love you, Lizzie. And I totally agree. It couldn't have been more perfect that it was episode number three, because that's my number. Um, This is beautiful. The space that you've created is beautiful. The way that you're able to express yourself on this podcast and share your medicine with the world is amazing. And I am just honored to be able to be even a part of it let alone be able to witness you express yourself like watching you on Instagram always just filled my heart up with so much joy and so to now be able to have so many more like and deeper dosages of you instead of just like Instagram stories where it's like you can actually go really deep like you have on these other episodes so far and share so much of your medicine with the world that um it was an honor to be able to be in this space and share some of mine too and have us just chat about it. So thank you so much for having me on, Lizzie. I love you so much. Oh, I love you so much too. And even though we're so far away, I, I've i never felt closer to you. And I'm so, so grateful for you. And so grateful that you gave me this idea to have this space and that you were willing to share this space with me and you inspire me so much, Meg. And if you want to follow Meg on Instagram, please do it. She is at Megan Picaro, M E A G H A N P I Q U E R O. And my Instagram is healing is my biz B I Z. And if you want to message us, or anything like that. I love responding to how you guys, what do you guys think? Not that, not that this podcast is going to change very much, but I just love, 
your insights and what you relate to, what resonates with you. And uh, thank you so much, Meg. I am so, so grateful for you. And uh, I'm just so grateful for you. And I love you so, so much. Yay. I just wanted to like help you like do like a little plug too. Of if you leave a review, it helps others find this podcast too. So if you enjoyed this conversation, if you enjoyed the other episodes that Lizzie has done, leaving a review helps others find it. So um, it just spreads a little bit of love. <laughs> um, I love you all so much. Thanks. Thank you, Meg, for saying that. Good night, everybody. Love you all. Bye. <laughs> Bye.